Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with... CJ Lou from the Fire It Up with CJ show. Woo! If you've ever wanted to reinvent your life, then do we have the great positive change show for you. Tonight we'll talk about making great change, surfing the waves of change, and how to get in a state of change with total grace and ease. Mm. That plus we'll talk about following the flow line, trips to Kansas, returning to earth, heart opening and college graduation, and what in the word a boo-boo and ease has to do with anything. <laughs> so welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. <laughs> Well, I'm so been... excited to talk to you, Michael. It's been three weeks. It has been three weeks, and you have a son who has graduated. Congratulations. Oh, yes, thank you. He graduated from Duke um, last Sunday, and um, it was I was so thrilled that we were actually able to go into a big stadium. We were all six feet apart. We all had masks on. All the kids had masks on, but we had an unbelievable um, graduation ceremony. I was so, so grateful that we could do it. And we had John Legend, who is the um, guest speaker. It was amazing. So, yes, I'm very proud of my eldest son, who is now a graduate of Duke University. Woo! What does that do for your energy? Um, ah. Yeah, it's really interesting. I would say that... Um, you know, there's a, a continually letting go when you have kids. So when that my son left for um, college, it was the total eclipse of the of sun. Do you remember that time? That was yes. the day we flew to Durham. Was a total eclipse of the sun, and and there was this kind of letting go of when you have to just you know basically let go of the young man that left high school and let him go, like let him explore things and um when your child goes graduates from college there's another letting go and it's um and it's very hard because it, i don't think a lot of women recognize it but um as we were planning for five other mothers and i were planning a party for our sons who lived in this house i realized that this is probably the last party you know like this is kind of the Big mirror, you know, like you, you usually plan like a wedding. Well, that usually happens in the in the women's friend, family generally. So this is kind of all of our last bon voyage kind of party <laughs> that we, we will plan as mothers. And um, somehow, when your child um, graduates from college, there is a sense of okay, now you're a man. You're going to go out and find your 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 you know life's work and and relationship another woman who will replace me as the most important woman in your life and there's this kind of oh you know crushing sadness associated with losing that role um and i would say the other thing is that you know you have this role you know it, it's almost like four years ago i got a layoff like it's like you're you're going to be moving from full-time work to part-time work and then um, at the end of the graduation, I thought, yeah. now I'm fired. <laughs> You're out of a job. <laughs> so there's this, all this. You'll always be on speed dial. <laughs> I, I am, but it's like you're going to be there as consultant when needed. But otherwise, you're pretty much out of work now as the work as you knew it is gone. And so uh, that has been okay because I you know I got the layoff notice four years ago so I was kind of prepared for it but even if you kind of know there's always a sense of um, sadness and grief of uh, just just a beautiful time in life that you will you will have in your memories but it's it's gone you know it's time for you to move on and um, it really feels like um, um, as my son, births his new life I'm kind of bir going on a parallel track birthing my own life and it's it's just been interesting um and in some weird way I have a sense of what he may be going through because it's a cycle of life you go through knowing something in yourself and life as it was and then you move to a new place and discover what life will be and there's unknowns, like, what am I going to do? When is it going to happen? What will it be like? Um, I've been in that process for almost seven years now, as you know. But this is more, I don't know, there's this kind of 
prope propelling sense about it that was a little bit different than in the past. So anyways, it's been very, very exciting. So when um, I was smiling when, um, and as people probably know from the past, we don't know anything about, I have no idea what Michael's going to talk about. <laughs> he just comes up with an intro sheet, but it's about positive change. And um, it's um, getting excited about that change, um, not knowing what it looks like. And I, I'm presuming, based on the new house that you just showed me, you're going through something similar. So I, I want to hear all about the, your new entry, your new home, or is it a new part of your family? I don't even know how to describe Grace. Well, I, I would call Grace, and she's our, our nearly 40 foot, for a 40 foot long uh, rolling tiny home slash studio, you could say, uh, 500 square feet, 644 if you count the decks on her. Um, and um, it's a magical embarking that's going to take place within the next 30 days. And we're going to travel more or less toward the East Coast because we haven't really seen family since COVID started. But it is a, a new way of living, a new way of being. Um, and um, it's going to require even more downsizing of things. Um, but I believe even more uh, upscaling of life. And, mm. and I don't pretend to know what it looks like. Like we talked about uh, several moons ago, we were offered the opportunity to do a TV show. We don't know what to make. We're hopeful that out on the open road, the ideas will come to us that um, the shift will occur because we're putting ourselves out there. I call it road magic. And we're not attaching ourselves to any particular outcome. We had originally planned on, on buying a nice new home by the end of the year. I don't even know if that's the case. I have no idea. We're going to put ourselves out there and we're going to play and we're going to breathe into things. And at some points it may be more uncomfortable than others as we learn and grow. And particularly it's three kitties and a rooster in a 500 square foot environment. <laughs> so but I saw I the can... environment and there's plenty of places for the cats to hang out and the rooster will have his whole room, it seems like, by himself. So he'll have plenty of space as well and, and, um, and we'll create it as a Zen zone. It is... It's just such an allowing. When it comes to change, you set intention, what you desire, and then let the hell go. <laughs> That's a big thing. And so we don't know. We're not supposed to know. We can't know. You can't know what's coming next until you're in the next. Mm -hmm. And so there's a level of surrender, co-creation, of course. You have your ideas. You have what you desire. But there's an ex especially large level of surrender through this process. Mm. Yeah, and I think patience, too, because as I've been going through, when you start really wanting to follow the flow, it means listening to what the flow is telling you. And sometimes it's telling you to stay put, or sometimes it's telling you to go someplace that you're really not sure about where to go. And um, it's a it's a... It's a very different way of navigating when you're navigating in synchronicity to the flow. Um, it's not your timing anymore. It's some other timing of which you have no control over, but you can just listen to. We went and we got, um, I, I went out to uh, South Dakota to establish our residency because you need a state residency when you're traveling. So we established state residency in South Dakota. I traveled to Oklahoma to get the truck. There were some challenges there, but it all worked out. I got the truck. I got to Kansas. I had to wait for the hitch to get in. I got the hitch. The uh, past owner of Grace, the RV, helped me install the hitch. That's nice. And, and then he had me back up, attach the RV, uh, or, or actually, how is it? Drive forward, back up, attach the RV pulled forward, made sure he felt it was attached and had me drive backwards and I drove back one foot and the RV slipped loose and fell on the back of the truck, creating almost $10,000 worth of damage oh. and the truck was less than 24 hours old. Oh, my God. And we wow. don't have the truck right now because she is in the repair shop. 
Ugh. and expected to get out just five days before we're supposed to depa- uh, depart. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And <laughs> you get to let go mm. to a whole new level. And and as a spiritual teacher, I go, okay, why did this come about? How did I – it's always a co-creative process. What What was my involvement in this? And clearly, there's some there's some uh, wounding to be cleared over backing up. I've had three other backup incidents since I was a kid, and mm. and and I've determined where that came from, and I get to clear off of that. Cool. Um, and then the uh, previous owner, he had told me only a minute before this happened, you got to be careful with your tailgate here because I destroyed the tailgate on my truck, um, doing such and such. And then he destroyed the tailgate on mine. <laughs> Only a minute later, so this is karma to clear off of that. I think the big two things are I had helped lift the uh, I had helped lift the hitch in and it weighed 280 pounds and it hurt my back again. Mm. And, and my back has been my governor. Mm. And so I'm sitting in the truck with him directing me rather than me taking charge of my own safety and environment mm. because I'm in such pain and I'm focused on the pain. Mm. That was an opportunity to do things differently. Instead, I didn't because I said, I want to watch video through video. I want us to go through this carefully. And we didn't. And then, boom, it happened. Where normally oh. I am extremely OCD of making sure every 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 dot is I and T is crossed. So that's one piece of it. I believe the second piece of it is a lesson in forgiveness. I haven't had to forgive somebody to this level in a long time. And, and really, I've been asking um, on some level for him to apologize, to say, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, he's that. never apologized when that no, happened? No. Oh, wow. Okay. No, he just got me the heck out of there. Go, go, go. And I'm like, I want to sit. Let's get grounded. Let's move slowly. And he's like, no, no. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I want to sit. I want to get grounded. Let's move. Blah, blah, blah. Goodbye. And, and then alarms are going off in the vehicle because some things weren't set up right and all sorts of stuff is going on. Uh, and I've got a broken tail end of the truck. Um, and there was 10 or 12 days of, I was doing a lot of clearing work, but a lot of resentment. Wait, so he witnessed the tail, the breaking of your truck? He had to back up a foot. He and he so he saw attached. it. Okay, got it. Well, he, he said it's attached, back up, boom. Oh, I guess it wasn't attached. <laughs> 10,000. Well, it's technically it's right now it's a little under 8,000. Let's not, let's well, not keep rounding things up. A little under $8,000 worth of damages as we know so far. And um, mm. there was a part of me that was very hurt. First off, there's a part of me that's upset with myself. Why did you do this? Why didn't you pay more attention? It was the back. What can we learn from the back? Well, the back is about support. What does that mean? Are you feeling unsupported in life? No, what you haven't been doing is strengthening yourself. I'm, 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 I'm setting records in my, in my bike rides right now, mm. but I haven't been doing my core strength, my back mm. strength, my upper body strength, and, and automatic writing has been all over about this, so now I'm doing it. Mm. And so that was a component of taking care of yourself. But then for this 10 or 12 days, I was really hurt um, and going, well, you're not going to play the role of the victim. I know you want certain things from him. You just want him to at least say, I'm sorry, I goofed. And, and this is a retired firefighter who had all the, this is, has a house full of tools and stuff and seemed to know exactly what he was doing. And, and it, But ultimately, forgiveness is not about the other person. Forgiveness is about yourself. Hmm. And I hit that, maybe it was yesterday morning, and I'm about to cry, which means I hit a truth. And so I have let go of that. I'm still not really wanting to speak with him. <laughs> it's kind of a, a bummer that the first day you get it, and boom, right there and then. Um, but this whole growth process is about a deepening of letting go and a deepening of letting go of the desired outcome. Can we leave on time? I'm very confident. The shop isn't confident at all. Uh, they said, don't plan on it. Um, I'm very confident we can, but whether we can or can't, this is that letting go of here's how it needs to be. Yeah, or look like. Like it may be that you live in your van 
while you know just ask the people that you you know are oh, staying no, we with can, the... we, can, we can rent this place for as long as we as we'd like okay We're there yeah. but but we will keep setting up that that the beautiful 44 foot home we'll keep setting her up during this time um but it is it is completely out of our hands now co-creation will continue to work on intention and work on playing on an energetic field or having it take place sooner mm. but it's not in our hands yeah you know that um story reminds me of two things one is almost giving yourself the apology that you wanted i mean because if it were me what i'd want to hear is oh my gosh I feel horrible. I did this same thing to my car, and now I've done this to your brand new car. I'm so terribly sorry about doing this to you, especially as you just got your car, you know, and what can I do to help? I wish I could do something financially, but I honestly can't. I don't have the money to do it, but anything else, please tell me what I can do. Even like sending you off with a prayer, like can I send you a prayer for a safe journey or that the costs will be minimal or or something in recognition and accountability for I thought I had it. I've done this work several times and I didn't. And now, you know, I'm so sorry. You know, what can I do? You know, something, anything, and to just even give yourself – that pretend that was him <laughs> saying what you wish he would have said, right? And probably, and it's like, I, I think it's so hard. I, I love the idea of the multi-level forgiveness, right? You kind of forgiving yourself for like, why did I do that? You know, mm -hmm. I know I knew better. My back hurt, and I just, you know, strove past it. I, I gave up. I gave up responsibility. Yeah. The universe doesn't like that when you take yourself out of the driver's seat. There's surrender, but there is paying attention. Yeah. It's a very expensive lesson to learn. <laughs> and, and you know, I, I've got to believe that, you know, spirit was talking to you several times, right, and you weren't listening. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It's like work on your core. Work on your foundation and your core to strengthen up your center, Right. And what's interesting is like you, it's the hookup where these two things meet, which is kind yes. of like the core of the vehicle itself, you know, and it, bro it broke. Right. Like the thing in the front got broken broke by the thing in the back. So, I mean, there's just so many interesting metaphors about it, um, but it is so incredibly it's kind of there's a grief, too, because it seems like there's an injury for your baby. Like you just got your brand new baby and it got injured. Like the minute in your care, it like got injured. You're like, Oh my God, my poor yeah. baby. Oh, I can't even imagine Michael. That is such a hard and beautiful start, right? Like you'll always remember to watch your core. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, how many, uh, and this has been all of your accidents have been, um, as I, I don't know, it seems like there's a sense of striving, wanting to finish the race, hitting deadlines, you know, so this is kind of a... In this case, what it is, so when I was 16, I went to my first national championships, mm -hmm. and I'm at a diner before the, before the big race, and I, I had a beautiful breakfast, I think some French toast, and I got in the car and watched in the rearview mirror and backed up. And it turns out there was a lamp post cement piece that was below the view of the rear view mirror. Oh no. And my bikes were on the back of the car and I crushed my bike. Oh no. Oh my God. Before the big race. Oh um, Michael. Go, go forward. Wow. Um, I, in, in, uh, on book tour in, uh, in uh, Las Vegas. We were backing out of a out of a parking spot, and somebody hit us there. I had another backup situation similar in um, in Colorado. There's something else that took place, and then recently there was backing up with Tessie at at a, a hiking trail where you couldn't see. Actually, the the rearview camera shut off, and. I kissed a stone wall and have scratches on the back bumper. Um, 
which I'm like my perfect baby. Then there was something else and then a, 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 a rental car challenge and then this. And, and the thing is, I'm careful. I'm neurotically <laughs> careful about backing up neurotically careful because <laughs> of these things oh, Michael. and as best as I can tell yesterday there's a wound that actually goes back to my childbirth and I'll clear it later today having to do with backing up or going backwards mm. oh and wow that's profound now I was taken out I was a tong baby and I had a nice dented head for 24 hours because of the forceps they use to actually pull me out. Right. Um, there's some energetic wounding there. Yeah. Wow. And so that's a component of it. And then there's some additional level of awareness. So what I said is I was going to walk the truck each time that I backed up to make sure my area and my environment is safe. But in this case, I didn't even consider doing it because I was just – attached to a v uh, to a to a hitch there's nothing around me but there's some additional element of awareness that i get to bring to all of this mm. wow that's very interesting there's so many things that are, are deeply embedded in that and and that it's like getting you the first thought i had was wabi-sabi do you know that idea in japanese artwork that this idea of you know, they take a pot that's cracked and then they put yes, it, that yes, gold yes. filament. Yes, 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 and there's a beauty in the... Imperfect. There is a perfection in the imperfect and celebrating each of those little dents and, you know, as kind of like... That's what I'm doing with, with Tessie. Yeah. Is, is I'm using it as a reminder. On my better days, it's a reminder. On other days, I'm like, ooh. And I mean, it's not bad. It's not worth rewrapping the whole back of the vehicle for this yeah and and you look at it just as a great teacher yeah I, I, yeah uh, and the whole idea of it's like it's it's forcing you to go back all the way to the beginning like it, and I think that one of the things that I think um I've noticed for myself and other people who are going through the spiritual journey is the more work you've done there was a certain point in which you just have to work backwards to birth and like before you even knew like trauma before you were even conscious of, of what was going on. And it sounds like you're, you're in the territory of the unknown discovering this whole um, piece. And it's, it's a, uh, it's very deep work. I mean, I've been doing that for the last, I would say since COVID began and it's extremely deep work um, and it's, uh, depending, someone described to me yesterday, depending on how guarded you are, um, the, um, molting of your hardened shell becomes more icky. You know, if you had a really thick, deep shell, you know, a big, you know, if you're, as you're the butterfly and if you had a really thick cocoon and it starts dissolving, I mean, and all the stuff around it, your former self starts getting super icky and, uh. And sounds like this, and in some ways, it's like a perfect way to start your journey of like, okay, I'm breaking, I'm starting all, it's like a birth, right? It's like we're rebirthing yourself in this new vehicle. Wow, Michael, so many, wow. It's really actually deeply profound that that happened in a lot of ways, as painful as it was and is or... Um, yeah, well, wow. it's still, it's still, so the question is, and, and Jessica is going, is there more to clear? And there is about birth, but there isn't clearing over the specific event, but you can, a loss is a loss and there's a loss of well, my beautiful brand new vehicle, yeah. literally less than 24 hours old from the factory. Yeah. The tail end got crushed on her. Yeah. <laughs> and that hurts. And it can still, you can do all the clearing work, but you can still have grief. Oh, it doesn't go that. away. The grief doesn't go. <laughs> That's the unfortunate thing about transformation. You still have to feel the pain. I mean, uh, you know, I've been, um, I've been doing all this body work. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a, the dented vehicle that's now like 50 eight, nine, I don't even know how old I am, years old. And, you know, you have all these dents and, like, you know, patches that your body makes up so to, like, go, you know, like, hurt the shoulder, then, like, the shoulder goes in, you know, you have all these 
alterations that happen so that your body can be in balance. And what happens is, you know, I, I hurt my shoulder, my shoulder rolls in, it's cemented in a particular way. Therefore, this other shoulder goes back to compensate, then it's cemented in a certain way. And this, this holding pattern just emerges. And when the holding pattern starts releasing, everything starts hurting all over again. So my whole body has been kind of going through a reverse, like, I remember having this problem in my 30s. I remember having this car injury in my 20s. And it's just being reversed back and back. And as it reverses, I feel all the same pains that I felt before. It it literally is physically painful. I had some an adjustment the other day where I was getting my upper back adjusted because I realized I curl my shoulders in like this. It's um, it's a, a flight fear. It's the hiding strategy. You know, if I if I stay still and make myself really small, no one will notice me. And so I've been working on my back and I feel now a cavity for my heart. There It wasn't there before. I'm like, wow, my heart can open. And so my heart has been opening and I'm feeling it has a new place to rest. And the pain associated with my heart opening, because you have to re-experience all the pain that, and it hurts and physically hurt. It emotionally hurts. I've been sitting in meditation and I'm crying, weeping. And I have no idea what I'm weeping about. But it's somehow the energetic release of stored up pain that has been in there for so long. And I'm a mess. I went to um, meet with my mom and she was going over stuff in the will. And I'm in this tender hearted place. And I started, I, I, she's like, so here's what happens. I have these IRAs, blah, 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 blah. And then she said, this is what your dad gave you. And I just, my whole body just flushed out and I just started crying. <laughs> she just could not. And then that evening I started crying about my mom's death. She's still alive. But just the thought of her dying and the pain that I still have for my dad and the pain that I will presumably feel in the future about the loss of connection to to mother, you know, all these kinds of things, um, they feel painful, right? And, but in order to have positive change that's integrated, it it's part of the journey. It yeah. you cannot get to these beautiful transformative pivot places until you go through the pain. There's no yeah. way around it. It's interesting because I'm going back as you're talking. And, and I've had a lot of muscle pain near my right knee recently. Mm. And, and it goes back to um, surgery I had when it was 20. My mm. back goes back to an accident I had when 21. Mm. And while you're talking, I'm going back there and I'm going, have you cleared off of the original back incident? Mm. I'm like, no. Well, what happened? Well, you're in a bike race. You'll come back from Europe. You're going to go back to Europe. You're so incredibly strong. A guy locked handlebars with you at a turn and felt that the answer to locked handlebars is brute force and to try to pull one piece of metal through another, oh, which no. doesn't work. And I tried to keep myself upright and uh, slip discs in my back. All right. Oh, my you God. Got to clear on that. What's the emotion? Well, you would come back from Europe. You were so strong. And in a sense, you just ruined everything. You just blew it. Oh. Now let's go to the knee. What happened there? Well, you were about to go to a, another national championships. You had one last race. Uh, the race was delayed due to torn tornado warnings. It took place on the track near midnight. Probably should have been home sleeping. A couple guys crashed in front of you. You ended up running right into them. And um, you had reconstructive surgery on your elbow. And then when that was done, you had surgery that later you determined probably shouldn't have taken place on your knee. And there's this sense of you ruined everything, not because of the knee, but uh, I was going to national championships. Oh, yeah. And you I'm ruined going... your everything before your big journey. And so oh. these get to be cleared and these are repeating patterns. Oh. And so when the teacher is ready, the, the student is ready, the teacher will appear. 
the teacher are all these massive clearings that get to take place. Mm, mm. And when we're ready, we go, what have I done wrong that this is taking place? But it may be that you're actually just where you need to be, perfectly on your path for the shoulder for to come up, for you to be having to deal with these things that are that are causing you to crack your heart open again, for the knee to be bothering you. And it happens to everybody as we're getting older that the injuries from earlier come back. Mm -hmm. But I think it's for a higher level healing. Yeah. Well, going back to what you'd said, it's to happen for total grace and ease, right? And so it doesn't seem like ease, right? The, what you just described does not seem like ease. Ease is a mindset. And so even ease going... Ease is also the name of our truck. You're kidding me. <laughs> no. So the vehicles, he, his truck was called Faith and the RV was called Grace. We kept Grace and called the truck Ease. Wow, isn't that fascinating? So the ease, it's very, I think that to travel this journey that you're on and to reach a place of ease is going back to what you said in the very beginning, it's a total acceptance, mm -hmm. right? It, it's, I don't want my tr first, you know, voyage to have this, you know, a dented thing where I'm back, but it's, but in some ways, it's if you go into ease and grace, like this was a, a graceful, a, a, this was the best possible execution of grace. $10,000 is very expensive, but it could have been worse. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this is like, in some ways, a very inexpensive lesson. You weren't physically injured, thank goodness. So all those parts of you that were physically injured can now accept that it's time to, it's, you know, it's time to clear these things. Wow. <laughs> Michael, just, wow. How is Jessica with all of this? Is she, how is she doing? I think she's doing relatively well. She would like me to pay even more care and attention her biggest concern at this time is not to carry old habits over into the new vehicle oh. because old habits in a um, a thousand or two thousand or four thousand square foot environment are very different than habits in a 500 square foot environment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it feels very peaceful in there at the moment. The animals haven't been moved over but neither have our possessions. Mm. And so the question is, how can we bring as much peace as possible to the new environment? And it is, it is a 44 foot long, you could call it metal tube or ear canal. It's an amplifier of whatever sounds you bring into it in a mm. sense. Mm. And so she's looking at things with a fine tooth home right now and say this cannot last you can't do this this way you can't do that we get to do things at an even higher level mm. if we're living the tiny home game mm. Mm. yeah it's it's so interesting because in the past the, as you have shared your experiences as I understand them, and I don't really know at your birth experience if you're pulled backwards and you thought, oh my gosh, I'm going backwards and I'm, I ruined everything kind of What scenario. I got out of a past life regression, whether it's real or not, is, is that um, before I was birthed, I had made the decision that I didn't want to be here. How did I choose my folks? And I love them very dearly. Yeah. But how did I choose them? And I don't want to go. Right. That's very common, and actually. <laughs> and so I came into this world kicking and screaming, and it took the tongs to, to yank me out, which had to be, if you actually have deformed a skull for 24 hours, that has to be a hell of a lot of pain. Mm. And what's interesting, mm. though, is if we really want to play out this scenario, my head got dented right after I got to Earth. The truck got dented oh, right after wow. Earth too. There is a parallel there if we want to play this game. Yeah. Well, and then all your extremities, like it was your elbow and your knee. These are like yeah. 
join and their joins. You know what I mean? Where it it happened during a join in in your car too, where it wasn't. You know, you got nicked in these joins. There's something about joining. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're playing the great detective game. <laughs> I could spend yeah, here for hours the, actually all, analyzing all this. Is, is b- because as I was closing the RV, I, I just boo-booed. I'm still learning about it. I, I, I was shown by the salespeople where the, where the stools go when you close the RV. And so I, when I closed it with you, it actually caught a stool, and I have a little uh, stool repair work to do. I'm still learning about this whole thing. Yeah. And I have to just be super kind and easy with myself as there are learnings. Change historically isn't pretty. Yeah. Well, and and I think the other thing is, I was thinking about your elbows and knees and over, so I've done all this body work and it's almost like I'm a landing in a new body. There've been times where I'll go out the door. I'm like, wow, is it always look like this? I mean, I literally feel like I've finally landed in my body. And what's happened is I've, I've stubbed over the last three weeks, I've stubbed my toes, hit my ankles, hit my knees against everything. And it's, and it's, it's as if I landed in my body and I don't know how, like, I don't even know the proprioceptic balance of where my elbows and shoulders and everything are going to fall. I had, a, I had on yesterday, Carolyn Corey. She has the, the, the most amazing documentary, Superhuman, is it The Invisible World Made Visible? Um, and one of the things that she did is she, she super sleuthed um, all of these, what we call parapsychology phenomenon, mm-hmm. which, which are real. And parapsychology has been studied. It, it, it's, it's to a degree of scientific validity um, that far exceeds anything, for instance, in the pharmaceutical industry. And one of the things that she tracked down, and I had seen this online many years ago, is a group where kids had to see without their eyes. Mm. And so they will be blindfolded where you can do a test. There's zero visible light getting through. Mm -hmm. And they can read books. They can go to the grocery store. They can ride bicycles. uh, They can go rollerblading. Without um, without being able to see. Without being able to see because they're tapping into consciousness. They can literally read a book. They could read a book behind their back. Mm, because wow. they're tapping into consciousness. And so I'm going to start taking this this training after after interviewing her yesterday of of being able to see without seeing. And, and you can actually have the blind see. I'm like, this is the most revolutionary thing in the world. Wow. And so I want to learn how to see without seeing. Because I have a feeling as I expand my awareness, I will stop the tripping, bumping and stuff that you're talking about as well, because I will have that 360 vision around me. Mm. Right. It's a it's awareness as in the spiritual awareness, as in you're, you you become non-dual. Yeah. That's going to be so. So she has a training class. Yeah, yeah. What there's she has in the UK. They have as well. It's an online training you can do with her. There's a gentleman in uh, I think it's Ogden, Utah, who teaches kids this technique along with karate and some other stuff. He teaches kids how to see without their eyes, and kids get it super simply uh, because they don't know that they can't. And then adults, it's more difficult, but can learn as well. And and I had trained myself many years ago to be able to run in the dark without lights, and I'd be able to see the trails and things of this sort. So I know it's in me. Right. It's very, very, it's in all of us. You know, you hear of it from people at a, a Joe Dispenza retreat where somebody pops and all of a sudden they can see behind them and stuff and they're looking from above. There are trainings you can do to actually learn this. Oh, okay. If you take the training, tell me, Michael, I'll take it oh, with I'm you. That sounds training. cool. I am, I'm going to start the training this weekend. Okay. Send so me the I, link. Maybe we can take it together and share our experiences oh, because I would, be... because I think that'd be really cool. It's that, you know, it, it reminds me of that Star, Star Wars episode when Luke has the blindfold and it's like the force within you and he's sitting, there, you know, like being able to yeah. see without seeing. Oh, that's really cool. I think it, it's, um, and I think that's part of being in synchronicity is to see, hear, and feel. Um, my um, friend who um, has been awakened for a very long time, he describes it as you're, it's becoming um, vulnerable and to 
cultivate your sensory abilities beyond what you even think is capable. Because when we, when we do that, when we can feel things and smell things and see things, even with our eyes closed, I think it, uh, it brings a whole nother level of awareness, I think, because you can, I think it's, it's probably easier to be in synchronicity. I don't know if I've told you this, but I've been, um, doing these meditations, these Tumo meditations, and, uh, there's one in which you call out to the Ma, you know, Mother Earth, and you place your hand, you, you put your, your foot, your, your, your knee up like this, and your hand over the cup in your ear, and you, like, listen to Mother Earth, and, all you do in the meditation is you say, ma, ma, ma. And as, as you keep on really listening to the music and singing ma, what happens is you feel the vibration of the earth and you hear your voice becomes an amplification of, of what you're hearing at some very deep level of the earth. And it was phenomenal. When I did that, I could feel, first of all, I was like, if you're all of a sudden the tuning fork and you're list, and you are just closing your eyes and being one with the mother, in this case, and you're using the vibrations to come through your mouth and you can feel it, it was the most extraordinary um, connection because the deep connection that you feel with the th four set is around us. Can it, it, you feel it through the vibrational part of your body, like you do with singing bowls, but this somehow having it go through you and, and vibrate through your vocal cords was extraordinary. It's been just beautiful to have that witness or just feeling the light come into you and just feeling that, wow, I am light. And you can feel the presence of light just in your body and like in and out radiating. It's just, just tapping into those senses and being able to bring it in, know that there's no difference between you and the sounds or you and the light. And then so much so that you can amplify the light out or amplify the sounds out. It's really quite extraordinary. That to me is where the game gets to be played now. Yeah, which is a game of understanding the light inside of you, being able to expand it out, understanding the field inside of you, being able to expand it out, understand the frequencies around you, being able to integrate them and shift them and change them. It's almost going back to like when we were five years old or something, we didn't know any of this stuff wasn't possible. Yeah. And playing make believe with frequency, with life, with vibration, with tonality, um, with color. And playing with all of that, that I feel is the next level. We were gifted an opportunity to go to this device called the Integratron last week, mm -hmm. which is a home that was made in the 50s out by Joshua Tree. Oh, wow. And it's supposed to be the most acoustically perfect home built on, you know, vortexes and ley lines. Mm. It's this amazing dome-like structure mm. um, and it vibrates. And, mm. and with singing bowls in it and stuff, our bodies just started doing this amazing vibration, like singing bowl or uh, um, sound therapy taken to a whole new level. So you've already gone. And that's... We, we did it on oh, this past Friday. Wow. And, and, and it was it was a blessed experience. I believe I wasn't as present as... I know I wasn't as present as I would like to be because Ruru was hanging out in the car with... the. Uh, it's Tesla, so it has a, a dog mode, so he's in there safely. But I kept on wanting to check. <laughs> and it took me a little bit out of presence. But you still feel the vibration. The yeah. vibration is the vibration. Whether or not you want to be fully present or not, your choice. But the vibration is the vibration. And I feel it did help things. And it's just things like the Integratron, things like checking out Carolyn Corey's uh, superhuman um, documentary, things like working with people in what I call the space capsule and playing with vibration, which is what you're talking about on a whole new level. I believe this is where the shift is coming from right now and we get to play make-believe yeah go to do your meditation picture playing with your light go to do your meditation listen to mama earth we are gifted that we tend to almost always choose places where we can literally hear the earth mm -hmm. and so here out by joshua tree you can hear her hum on mm. maui on the side of haleakala you could hear her hum um, on Emerald Isle, the southernmost uh, uh, island in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, you could hear her hum. Mm. Uh, 
but it's always there. Yeah. And just, and, and, and you can feel the heartbeat. I mean, if you're very still and you are tuning, you can feel like, you can feel the waves of energy and the heartbeat kind of going. I didn't understand for a while. I've been feeling like my head is like, vroom, 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 and I didn't know what that was. Sound. Oh, really? That's the sound. It's a vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> yeah, and it's just, I could feel it in my head, vroom, vroom, and I, I always thought it was just energy, but I didn't realize it's the vibratory energy that comes from below, and because your head is just like a big echo, it's a big boat, you know, big, cavity it's like boom boom it's like the echo chamber in your brain boom 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 um but yeah it's been weird to just recognize that vibration and sound is going through us all the time and we don't really recognize it but if we tune in and be in resonance with it it, it starts healing you it really does start healing like it, it it's almost like the mother that you never write see or talk to finally you're like hello are you there and it's like finally (laughs) like now you recognize that I'm here and you're listening you're listening to my vibration you're listening to me and when you just surrender as you're talking about surrendering and letting go and being in ease with this vibration it will heal you it's been amazing the kind of healing that's happened through um, just trying my best. And as you describe, it's faking it until you make it. I don't, sometimes I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I was like, I don't know why I'm doing this. And then finally I thought, but I'm just going to pretend I'm listening to something. And then I thought, wait, actually I hear something. And it took a while for that to come, but it, you start building the neuro circuitry in your neurobiology to change its pattern so that I'm faking it, I'm imagining it, so I'm just driving down that road, driving down that road, driving down that road, until you're like, actually, I do hear something, and I feel it going through my body. It takes a while. It's going to be so, I'm just so thrilled for your um, trip, Michael, and I'm so sorry that this happened to you, and it's all meant to be. It's very wabi-sabi, I think, in some perfect way. I, I like how you put that. And we are all wabi-sabi. <laughs> we, are, we are all broken. We are all wounded. We are all glued back together. And, and to love ourselves, especially because of that. Yeah. Well, I think they, they take golden, golden yeah. glue and they glue it. I can because picture of this. it. Yeah. And, and, they put, and they take these broken objects, Japanese. They take these beautiful broken vases and they and they and they just revel at the beauty of this broken vase that has these gold you know the broken pieces glued together with golden filament it's just a beautiful so we can think about ease filled with broken golden <laughs> filament and now she, gracing she, her she will be happy when she graces us again and then and then we will be off and and um just so many good healings that to get to get to occur during this time. Period. Yeah, and the recapitulation, right? I mean, your whole move and the consciousness that both Jessica and you are engaging in creating your new home and being conscious of what you literally leave behind, both energetically and physically, and then what you bring with you, this whole recapitulation is just, um, yeah, even this trauma you can leave with you back in, you know, where you stay and then go on your journey. It's a very different way of launching the big race. Cause in all those instances, almost all the, a good portion of them had a, I'm starting the big journey or the big race, or I'm competing in this big race or game or whatever. And so now you're starting it and maybe it doesn't even have to be, a big race. You know what I mean? No, it's I want this gentle and slow and easy and I wasn't wasn't my fault, I'll put that in giant quotes. Yeah. That we didn't go as slowly as we could have with connecting these two devices. I thought he's got it covered. He says you're safe to back up. One foot kaboom. <laughs> How much more slowly can i go how much can i not treat this as a race or with an expectation 
or need to do this. I guess in the RV world, everything's filling up quickly. So there are times where we get to be certain places because of our reservation. Can't kind of do it like the um, uh, like when you're out on the uh, Camino. Picture the Camino where it's 10,000 times the people. And if you don't have things booked in advance, you're sleeping on the side of the road. Right. That's kind of the RV world right now. However, other than that, allow it all to just be without that incessant, let's be honest, Michael push yeah. that has been there in the past. I want no push on this thing. Yeah, it's striving, pushing. I, I'm, I'm speaking for my own CJ version of it and, and traveling this journey. It's like striving, pushing, wanting something else to occur and not listening and watching and observing with what is happening. I just want, CJ wants to just move forward. I mean, this has been my journey over the last three months because I want to get going, produce something, big, develop the next big thing. And each time I go to the I Ching, it's like, wait, wait, wait. And it's like, ah, you know, and, I, and, and the striving and pushing and competing and wanting to create something, it has just been, I've been getting messages every time to stop. And it's very hard to do, um, but if you are to be in grace, which is to listen to the flow and what the divine voice is trying to tell you to do, it's, there is no striving, pushing, figuring out, knowing what to do. It's just open, receiving, <laughs> and flowing. It's the mm -hmm. weirdest way. It is the hardest thing is probably the hardest habit that I need to break myself from. And it sounds like that's that's your opportunity too, right? Before you get in the car, how can you break the habit of striving, pushing, needing to know, needing to figure out, needing, you know, because, and what's so interesting is that you knew, your back hurt, you, you knew and you didn't listen to your body, which is based on what I've heard from you, is like just such a great navigating force well, for you. Well, it's interesting though. In moving the hitch, I was actually being as conscious and cognizant as I could be. Yeah. And we even got additional help. Mm. And so sometimes the learning is simply going to come. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's what do you do once that learning is there? All right, the back's going to get a little sore here. Mm. But now afterwards, can I simply be with it rather than go, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. And I was in a place of, oh, my gosh. And then I had something to really, oh, my gosh, about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so 30 days you're going to be starting in theory. Who knows? Life May 31st will tell you. is push out day. That's actually 21 days from now okay. is when we are planning on being on the road. Um, if it's a good, good uh Jewish term here would be beshert, which means if it's meant to be. Beshert. If it is beshert, if beshert. it's meant to be, if it's God's will, if it's universe's will, we'll be out on May 31st. Mm. If not, it'll be soon thereafter. Right. And all I can do is prepare and get light. We have a guest coming on the show who's going to come out here, I believe, next week, who's going to help us look at downsizing your life. Mm. How can you, which... People, as, as we get older, we go to from these gigantic mansions or mini mansions to smaller, smaller, and smaller. In our case, we're going from a retreat center to a 500-square-foot tiny home. Mm. Uh, what does that look like? What does that feel like? What gets left behind? And then I'm hoping to attract in somebody in the L.A. area in the next couple of weeks, magically attract them in, who is a, a feng shui master. Mm. who can look at the RV and what can we do from a feng shui perspective. Mm. I was looking one up yesterday and they're about how your, how your land is positioned, how things are outside mm -hmm. of you. And I'm like, oh, but there is no outside of us in this thing. This is just the rolling 44 foot box. And how do we want to feng shui that up? Because North and South and East and West will continuously change. Right. Well, there's two different models, one in which it continually changes, and one is which is like you are the center and like, the vehicle itself has a north, front, back. I mean, it, they're two different models as I understand it. Oh, that will be exciting. Anything else, Michael, before we wrap up? I'm so excited mm -hmm. for you. 
I think for all of us, how kind and gentle the knocks are going to happen. If you're going for great change, um, you're going to break a stool or two. <laughs> things, <laughs> things are going to happen and you are going to be, well, great change to me is like, is, is like one of the most thrilling mountain bike rides you're ever going to have. Mm-hmm. And in a thrilling mountain bike ride, you're on the edge. You're right on the edge. It's exciting on that edge. But you might go off the edge a little bit. And and you might take a spill or a tumble. And you go, wow, the time of great change is playing on an edge. It's what can I do? It's who can I grow into? Who, who am I capable of being? And so if you take that tumble, not to then judge yourself for it. And I looked for the last 10 to 12 days to figure out how to judge myself. It happened as it happened. It happened as it happened. I'm looking for, you know, somebody to say, I'm sorry it happened. That's my own deal. I get to go inside on that and and not place myself in a victim role. But when the happenings happen during this time of change, to understand as hard as it is, it's almost, it's really hard to wrap ourselves around the concept of that's the juice. But that is just the energy of the thrilling ride. Mm-hmm. And be okay with that. Use it as a reminder. Use it as grounding. Use it as an opportunity to try to slow down the process. But understand, no great change. Nobody has ever moved in or out of a house, at least doing it themselves with it being impeccable mm-hmm. each step of the way. It's where's the damn toothbrush? <laughs> right, it's messy. The, the process of transformation is messy. It's it messy is. and it will hurt and you'll make mistakes. And that's why, I mean, when you talk about falling off a cliff, you literally are going from a known path to an unknown path. And when you go to that unknown path, it's inherently messy. But when you come out from the chasm that you fell into, you will be on a beautiful new path. And, but I think the key thing that you're saying is also self-love, like love yourself. And that's what's so important about it. I love how you said not judging yourself, but loving yourself throughout the whole ride. It's, it's Pele energy. It's Kale energy. It's Kali energy. It's a burning down of the old for something new, but do not judge in the burning. Do not take a snapshot and go, my God, David Burns line, my God, what have I done? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> How did I get here? No, it's part of the process. Hmm. Allow it. Yes. That's all I've got. That's all I have. Woohoo! Woo-hoo! There's a softening in me, CJ. There's a total <laughs> softening through this process. I can tell. <laughs> so, well, oh, go ahead. Well, I feel like your woohoos are like, woohoo. <laughs> there, there, there are still some big woohoos in there, but there is a definite softening um which is required because if you're hard and you try to square squeeze through a doorway you're going to break a lot of stuff yeah better to be kind of soft and squishy (laughs) (laughs) it's beautiful to witness so for everyone out there this is michael sandler and cj lou from the fired up with cj show say be well have fun squeeze yourself through that doorway in the most gentle fashion you can and above and beyond all else Shine bright. Woohoo! <laughs>